I'm Damon DeMarco for createx3.com. Thank you so much for joining me. Writers write into my channel and they ask me, how can I be a better writer? If you keep doing the work, and quite frankly, if you keep making mistakes, you will get better at it. And eventually you will develop something called your own voice. And that's a very, very powerful thing to discover. So many people that I know, and you know, and the world knows, go through their whole lives and they've never found their own voice. Doesn't matter what line of work they're in, doesn't matter what country they live in, what city, what state, what culture, doesn't matter. They have not found their own voice. And probably that's because they were not brave enough to speak when they thought that other people would diminish them. When we speak in our own voice, what happens typically is that we encounter resistance. Somebody will say to us, that's wrong, or I disagree with you, or how dare you, or who do you think you are, and so on and so forth, right? These are all the voices of resistance, but you've got to keep going. You've just got to keep going. There's no other way to do it. Eventually, you'll realize that you and your voice are one. Your voice is not separate from you. Your outlook on life is not separate from you. It is, in fact, the reason why you're probably writing or creating your art, whatever it may be, in the first place. It is that compulsion to delve into yourself so that by understanding yourself better, you will understand the world better. This is not a process that the world in general, in its current state, acknowledges, let alone rewards. But if this is the way that you live your life, then, you know, you understand that this is the way to go. This is the only way you can go. I know uh, I have a friend who's an inveterate gambler. That's what he calls himself. He's in a program. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is a person who cannot stop gambling. He has a compulsion. He has an issue. He has a problem. Okay, and he knows that it's destroying his life. And so lately he's taken steps to try and correct that. Well, if you're an inveterate writer or an inveterate artist, it's really no different. Hopefully it's not going to destroy your life. You know, we, we don't want it to get to that point. However, what did Robin Williams say in that uh, movie a long time ago, Dead Again? One of the secrets to success or happiness in life is to figure out if you're a smoker or a non-smoker and then whatever you are, just stick with it. Just accept it. Don't fight it. Don't try to be the other thing that you're not. Just stick with it. So if right now you're writing, Fine. Now you know that every single day it's going to get a little bit better. It's not going to get easier, but it is going to be worth more in some way to you. This notion of voice, by the way, I'm thinking right now of Jack Kerouac, the, the great beat writer, who wrote his first book. It was called The Town and the City, and uh, it was a huge, like a monstrosity of a book. I believe it was like 1,100 pages in its original uh, format. He, he was encouraged to whittle it down because rarely do people want to read 1,100 pages. And it was a novel that uh, kind of satisfied, checked all the boxes for what a novel should be. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was like, this is what a novel is. This is what a novel should be. And it tanked. I, th I think he got a thousand dollar advance and he had spent years on it. And I believe it sold 400 copies. It was predictable in some ways. There was talent behind it, but it wasn't anything earth shattering until he wrote this thing called On the Road, which maybe you've heard of. He wrote it by connecting, I think it was 120 feet worth of paper, brown butcher paper, I think it was, and he rolled it into his typewriter so that he wouldn't even have to pause when he, he didn't do paragraph breaks, he didn't do line spacing, he just would stream of conscious the entire thing. It took him three weeks. And he wrote it stream of conscious. He wrote it, I mean, you just read any excerpt from it. He's just going on and on and on. There was no intention behind it other, other than to get stuff out. And that made a big splash, you may be aware. I mean, it sold many, 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 many copies and it put him on the map as a writer. And later on, he said, it ain't what you write, it's the way that you write it. It's a great observation. If somebody says to you, I went to the bank today and I withdrew some money. Eh, got it, clear. Thank you. But if somebody does like uh, Anthony Burgess did in Clockwork Orange, I moseyed down to the ching ching shop and I told the man behind the counter there, give me the bling bling. It's like, oh, now that's interesting. You know, that activates us on a totally different level. And that's what we talk about when we talk about voice. I'm not saying you should go out of your way and invent some wacky language. That's not what I'm talking about. I am saying, however, that you should perhaps acquire the bravery to take big leaps in your writing, if, to speak like yourself. For instance, if you come from a place in like crack of the ass holler, Tennessee, this is not anything against Tennessee, by the way. It's a lovely state, but I'm talking like deep woods, back woods, Tennessee. And if every time you talk to people, it's like this, and it's slowed down. And every time you look around a pine tree, you say to yourself, my goodness, I don't see anyone out there but the devil himself. And every time I see the devil himself, he looks like a squirrel. And when the squirrel come a-hawking around, I says to him, put your paws up. 
Because every time you put your paws up, I'm going to see your white belly and I'm going to shoot you dead in the belly. Because I don't take no devil on my land. My papa didn't do that. My grandpappy didn't do that. My mama ain't going to do it either. And so every time I see that squirrel, I'm going to say to that squirrel, you a dead squirrel because the devil is dead in my heart. If something like that comes out of you, you should write that down in the best way that you know how. If you're interested in my online Break Your Story course, if you're trying to write a story right now and it's just not working for you, well, a lot of people have said wonderful things about this online course that I've put together. And it's several hours worth of, uh, it's like four, four and a half hours, I think, of us talking about a systematic approach to creating a story from beginning to end and how you start with one idea in one sentence with four elements to it, four pivotal elements, and how you expand it out and expand it out and expand it out and expand it out until you get an entire paragraph and then you take the paragraph and you blow that out to a page and you take the page. You can do this. I've done it up to 30 pages before. And it's a great way to outline a novel. It's fast, it's easy, and it's extraordinarily effective. So if this is something you're interested in, by all means, check that out up here. Again, thanks for spending some time with me for createx3.com. I'm Damon DeMarco. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay creative.